Hey guys, so I just wanted to share with you all a little bit of musical tidbits from me. Uh, for those of you who have played music with me before when I'm playing guitar, or have watched me uh, work with me, if you work with me at Maxwell's and heard me tuning up guitars, um, you may notice that I have kind of my own little system of doing it, so I wanted to share that with you and kind of share a little bit um, of the theory behind while I do, why, why I do it. So, um, a lot of you know I'm a violinist and kind of grew up understanding intonation from an unfretted system. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, there's a difference between pure intervals, where intervals sound really well in tune with no beating between the notes, and what we most often use on fretted instruments like the guitar or a keyboard, piano, or something like that. So I kind of go somewhere in between what probably a lot of people do when they tune their instruments. Um, so if you start with like the G and the D strings, I usually try to get those two as perfectly as I can and then also match up a D note and a G note on the B string and the E string. So when you strum those four strings, you get this really pure, even, smooth as silk sound. Um, and then what I'll do after that usually is I'll tune my A string, the harmonic on, what is that, 7th fret of the A string, so my open E. You kind of hear the beating between those two notes. And then the same thing down at the 5th fret with my E string, my low E. Which takes very little movement to get that right in tune. And I find that with this G chord, or even if I leave that third out on the A string, makes that very pure. C chord is pretty good. F chord is pretty good. It gets a little wonky when you get to E and A. You hear the wah, 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 wah in there, right? Um, but you know, a lot of times our ears are kind of just accustomed to that unless you have unisons that are way out, right? We don't necessarily listen to all those thirds and stuff as critically. Um, so what's really interesting, if I'm playing on, we're just going to be on the G string and the B string. If I'm playing like G to C, that's perfect fourth. G to D, it's perfect fifth. We probably don't want to go there because that's a tritone. It's hard to tell if that's in tune or not, right? So if we go up to the E, we're probably thinking, okay, that sounds pretty good to our ear. But here's what's really interesting. I'm going to make a little uh, suspension chord here and resolve it. Sounds pretty good, right? But I can bring this B string down just a hair. A little bit farther than a hair. To where that B fits into that chord so well and so smoothly. There it is. Well, you can hear it through the mics on, on the iPad here, but, you know, and there's no, well, I don't want the G in there, I mean the E string. It's so pretty and so perfect, so you can't argue that the G and the B are out of tune because clearly they're not. There's no disturbances in the sound. However, when I put my first finger back down here, it's a little bit out. The D, you can hear it there, but check out this E. Barely. Right? But I can tune that E still a little high. And every guitar, you know, I've found... Ah, there it is. So hear that? G. Open G. Fifth fret on the B string E. Same thing if I probably play open here. So perfect, but then you put your fingers down in other places. Right? Because we found that the in-tune fifths are a little wider, in-tune sixths are a little smaller, in-tune thirds are a little bit smaller. Um, so, I don't know exactly where I was going with this, but, you know, it's something I kind of encourage you to do. Every guitar is going to have a different design down here in terms of 
where they compensate the B string and all that, right? Doesn't matter if it's acoustic or electric, you'll see some different designs. And with electrics, you can kind of adjust the individual saddles to give you the intonation you want. Obviously, you know, your, your best thing is making sure that you're in tune or pretty close to being in tune right here at the 12th fret because that's going to give you the most even intonation. Um, but it may not necessarily give you uh, in certain chords. Like, let's say I'm going to play a D chord now. You can really hear that. That's sticking out that it's out because you have a D and a D an octave higher that you can hear the beating against each other. But let's do uh, like a C chord. I'm going to put a C on the bottom. Put a G in the middle and an E on top. Ooh, that's just as smooth as it gets, and you almost listen to that as if it's like um, doesn't sound right because we're not used to hearing harmonies that smooth, except maybe like in in vocal groups and such. Um, so it's interesting that our our society of music has gotten along with with twelve tone equal temperament. When really it's kind of just an approximation of where where um, music should be and where scientifically, I guess, it makes sense. Physically, where it makes sense. Um, you don't all have to think this hard about it. This is just something that I've kind of discovered. Uh, Jeff Britton really kind of made me aware of different levels of equal temperament and just intonation and all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, if you have a, a system that you use for relative tuning, whether it's on bass or guitar or mandolin or um, any of those other crazy fretted string instruments, let me know. Um, be interested to try it and see what the difference in intonation and, and how it sounds. Um, when all else fails, even I go with, with a tuner. I think that's the easiest and most convenient, especially if you're, you're gigging and the humidity levels change and stuff. Having a tuner clipped on your instrument is usually a really big help, um, especially in noisy situations too. Um, but yeah, I mean, music is, is really interesting when it comes to pitch. I know that's something that, uh, uh, between pitch and rhythm, pitch is definitely my stronger of my two attributes there. But anyhow, I think that's pretty much it. That's kind of how I get if, if I pick up an instrument off the shelf or off the, um, the holder and... I don't even really have a pitch. I'll get G to where it's close and then tune everything around that G so that I'm close with that G chord. Um, so yeah, I think that's all for now. I've wasted almost eight minutes of your time. So I'll talk to you guys later.